So we've got Richard Saunders now. Now, on my Facebook post, I mentioned that Richard had a nice folksy style. And uh, that surprised one or two people. Um, so I thought, well, I, I'll go and look up and see what it says in the dictionary. So I used the Google dictionary. And um, I looked up. And one of the meanings for folksy was informal and unpretentious. So... How I, dare you? I, <laughs> do you want to formally complain? <laughs> well, so anyway, yeah, I think that, that, uh, that sums up Richard pretty well. He's the kind of chap that talks to his cats and uh, talks about what's in his fridge while he's on his podcast, <laughs> which I think is, is lovely, and I hope you keep doing that. Um, so, uh, Richard's superpowers and his super uh, superhero name. His superhero name is the Wallaby's Angel. I'm not sure what that means, but maybe we're going to get an explanation. Uh, and his superpower is the power of telekinesis. Put the two together, telekinesis, right? Yep. The Wallaby's Angel. I'm there at the All Blacks versus the Wallaby's game. I oh. use my superpower. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Excellent. So, so when I said somewhere, some people copped out with the second question. Richard said far too many things to mention for things that he doesn't want the conference to know about. That's right. But I'll just say one word. <coughs> One million dollars. Oh, all right. Yes. <laughs> Don't you mean one million dollars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pseudoscience, zero point energy machines. Mm. So welcome, Richard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Well, what a pleasure it is to be here at the New Zealand Skeptics Conference, and I bring you greetings from the Australian Skeptics. Um, that's the other island that way somewhere. There's a, there's a sign near the airport with all these lovely arrows pointing. That, that way, is it? It's that way, okay. <laughs> uh, with, with, to cities all around the world. Now, there was, well, was Susan the other day. We looked at it, and of course, they're all sort of facing away because we're so far south. It's, it's really interesting. Now, before I get started on my talk, I thought I'd just show you something that uh, I discovered when I was at Sydney Airport yesterday. Here we go. This was in the pharmacy. I should, have, I should have got myself a packet. There we are, homeopathic jet lag uh, prevention, of course, made in New Zealand. There we go. Thank you very much. But I was a bit worried. I went for a little bit of a walk this morning, and I was coming back towards the conference area. I was looking at the wonderful view, and then I saw something that really made my blood run cold, ladies and gentlemen. Here is us at the conference. They've started already. There's a chemtrail. I tell you what, we're in trouble now. And another thing that, that uh, I'd like to do every now and then, just to get it out of the way, just to do it, and so it's been done, is I've got a reputation in Australia for spoon bending, which is a lot of fun. And it's a good old skepticism, skeptical activity. You know, this one of the reasons modern skepticism came about was because of things like spoon bending. And I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration, but what I want to do is of course we know it's an optical illusion and the best way to demonstrate that and you can all try this and a lot of kids do this you've probably seen this if you get a, a normal pen and you just wiggle it the right way magic see we <laughs> there it goes so you get you can get the same sort of effect with a with a spoon of course if you get a, a, a spoon and you wiggle it just the, the right way, it can look like it's getting equally wobbly and wiggly. So we can get this spoon, we can rub it here. If I start to move the bottom, see that? <laughs> see? Who can see it actually getting wiggly? It's amazing, isn't it? And it, it, it's, what is amazing is this simple trick, just a simple optical illusion would fool so many people around the world. There we are. That, that takes years of skill. Well, no, it's powers from above, actually. <laughs> but people, people will really swear that that's getting... Um, oh. <sighs> oh, dear. <laughs> it's these cheap New Zealand spoons. I think that's... <laughs> Last time I did that, everybody applauded. I mean... <laughs> there we are. I don't want it. <laughs> All right, 
So I have uh, a great deal of fun in skepticism. I love it. it it's so fascinating, ladies and gentlemen. And a qu just quickly about me, um, I'm a life member of Australian Skeptics. I'm in the, uh, a fellow of the, Skep uh, the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Uh, inquir inquiry. <laughs> As you probably know, I'm on the James Randi Educational Foundation's Million Dollar Challenge. Million dollars! <laughs> Those people who were here last night. Uh, I've been on TV in Australia. I do a Mr. Investigator shows for schools for over 10 years now. And I actually, I, I performed that in Christchurch about 12 years ago at the New Zealand Skeptics Convention Conference back then. I do a podcast called The Skeptic Zone. I've written lots of books on origami. Uh, I've created a documentary called The Vaccination Chronicles, which is free on YouTube. Um, I, I do uh, jewellery and uh, make origami and I will also appear in TV and movies. And just a quick technical note, that yeah, some of the colours aren't coming through properly. But if we could, that's what happened with the last presentation too. So bear with us. Um, I think some of the red, reds aren't coming through properly, but it shouldn't matter too much. And yes, one of my great loves in life is doing origami. And I'm very well known for creating the origami flying pig for James Randi which is uh, I, I, about 10 years ago, and people fold that all around the world. That's just terrific. Makes good little earrings, too. Uh, it, when, for an or origami uh, folder like me, and an author, this, this, the biggest thrill is to invent something that takes off, and people all around the world fold it, and they show me, and they, they uh, write to me. It, it's, um, it's, uh, it's very touching. It really is. I'm also a terrible fake, ladies and gentlemen. I get to appear on TV in Australia as... <laughs> I get to play dress-ups in TV and movies. It's great fun. I'm a, a background actor. I'm, I also do bit parts in shows like Home and Away and, and whatnot. Uh, that was from the movie Australia starring Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman. Actually, that, yeah, Hugh Jackman gave me the best advice. He said, never name drop. So I... <laughs> that was good. Thanks, Hugh. That's great advice. So let's get on to looking at the talk today, which is all about mysterious energies and devices and things. And I thought I'd kick off with a quote. Why not? It's a wonderful quote, and it does actually have a lot of relevance to what I'm going to talk about. That it really is, and this is my experience too, it's easier to fool people than to uh, convince them that they have been fooled. Once somebody's been fooled and they've taken on board whatever the pseudoscience is and we'll be looking at, it's really hard to unfool them, if that's a word, to unwrap that and get them back to, to reason again. It's, it's fascinating. We're going to be looking at what we call energies unknown to science, or EUTS, which is a term coined by Barry Williams, the, uh, uh, who many of you will know from Australia, who was the president of Australian Skeptics for many years. And a lot of the, what we're going to be discussing are these mystical, wonderful energies completely unknown to science. And they include things like scalar energy, orgon, which we were dis discussing last night, Reiki energy as an energy, uh, aura, like an energetic field that some people say exists around the body, things like zero point or free energy from the universe. Thank you, universe. Um, the Schumann resonance, which is a, a real thing, which is to do with the atmosphere and um, energy waves in the atmosphere. But it, it, what it's been uh, misused for mystical devices, we'll get to. Things like vibrational energy there, quantum energy, spiritual energy, Keisha Foundation, plasma energy, and the list goes on and on and on. There are so many of these weird energies unknown to science. Just quickly, what is energy? This is a good question. Now, I'm not a physicist, and I've asked lots of people what is energy. So we can get a rough definition of first law of thermodynamics. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can be converted. Energy is something that does work or has the potential to do work. That's, that's how we can categorize it. We, ha we can measure energy with machines and devices and temperature gauges and things like that. Dual calorie of common uh, energy uh, forms. A horsepower is a, for is a measurement of energy. Something can do work. You can store energy in a battery, for example, or in a rubber band. If you stretch a rubber band, then that sto has stored energy in it. And, oops, I just pressed the wrong one. And it, we give it names. There's potential energy, there's kinetic energy, there's sound energy, heat energy. So we know all this. We know how they work. We can measure them all. Now, what we look out for when we're looking at uh, these strange devices and energies are lots of 
warnings, because we've seen a lot of these things before, red flags. There we go. If, if you see something advertised with Nikola Tesla or Albert Einstein, that's usually a red flag. It, usually, it really is. Some, I mean, it might, be, it might be okay, but usually it's a red flag. People say, we have this device and science has yet to catch up with us. We're ahead of science because science doesn't know everything. We've heard that so many times before. Conspiracies. We've developed this machine from this energy, but the powers that be don't want you to know about it. Can you? Yeah, thanks very much. Weasel words are common when we're looking at these new age sort of energies. This might help you. It could lead to. It may help you. It may improve. It's reported that study show all these sort of words. Another one that I've heard is zest. In Australia, there's a product being marketed called potentiated bee pollen from New Zealand. If you've heard about it, but it'll bring you back the zest to your life. So, all right. Um, words that we look out for: frequency, vibration, breakthrough. A red flag, flagged words for us. A guru behind whatever it is who knows everything, who's invented the thing, who's the ultimate authority is another red flag. We'll get to one of those. One size fits all treats everything, like homeopathy. Uh, you'll find uh, a homeopath who, who say homeopathy will treat anything. Anything you can possibly imagine, homeopathy can treat it and, and help it. Skeptical investigations are usually not welcome. Although sometimes at first, and we'll get the, to that in a minute, but normally skeptical investigations they don't want to know about. And something about being human, when people start to believe things, I know this works because it worked for me. And it can be, get very personal for people. Well, let's start off with good old organ energy, which was briefly mentioned last night. Makes cars run just the same. You'll understand why in a minute. Now, organ was, uh, depending on how you look at it, it was either invented or discovered, probably invented discovered, no, probably neither, just made up in the 1930s by um, Wilhelm Reich. The term comes from the word orgasm. It's cosmic orgasmic energy, orgasm and, and organism. Uh, and it does everything. This is another one size fits all. So it can protect one from bad or negative energies, from earth rays, emotional energies, negative effects from earthbound spirits. It gets worse. It can help cars drive faster, which you'll get to. And how, how would you, do uh, people know it works? Well, you can test it using aura photography, dowsing rods, and applied kinesiology. <laughs> In other words, and I've seen people do this, they say, here's a, a uh, device using organ energy. We know it works because we can get our div divining rod and whoop, there we go. It's absolutely working. Or maybe it's protecting. Look at that. Works both ways. It's amazing. Now, this Wilhelm Reich fellow was a, an interesting man. There he is. Uh, Austrian, and he, t he actually is credited with um, coining the term sexual revolution. And he did work with Sigmund Freud, but he did have a preoccupation with sex, it, it seems to be. Uh, he moved to, to New York in the 1930s to escape the Nazis. And that's when he developed this organ theories and energy. You need some organ back there, I think. And this device here, this young lady is in, is called an organ accumulator, which his patients would sit in to improve their health. But I'm not sure what he's doing with this, this instrument. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit weird there. <laughs> In uh, 1947, the U.S. Drug and uh, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration obtained uh, injunctions against him for this device, saying it was a f the fraud of the first magnitude. And uh, he, he persisted with it, and he also invented things like cloud bursting machines, which you can see in the lower corner. Unfortunately, he he still persisted with these devices and ended up in prison in late in life. And he was sentenced to two years, but died only after a year imprisonment. So not a happy ending for Wilhelm Reich. And not a happy story for Peter Brock, the famous Australian racing car driver, who many of you who I'm sure would have, would have known. A wonderful racing car driver, a true champion. He really was. Unfortunately, at some, somewhere along the way, he got mixed up with new age and spirituality and 
finally all gone energy and he was convinced that this little box here called the energy polarizer or fuel energy polarizer I think when placed inside a car would make the car run better now it wasn't attached to anything it was just sort of placed in the car and he said you could tell the difference you know more power more acceleration smoother ride and all the rest of it and he tried to market it and there it is it, when you bought one there was the instructions for fitting it and everything like that and it didn't go well for Peter Brock with this device because it was pretty pretty soon that the media cottoned on and just couldn't just didn't buy it you know in, in general and, and he split with the uh, General Motors Holden over it big argument and indeed, in the 1980s, uh, 1987, the Australian Skeptics awarded Peter Brock our Bent Spoon Award for, for this device. But he still uh, believed in it until he died. And he died uh, about 10 years ago. Sadly, he was in a, a rally and uh, hit a tree and died, which was terrible. You know, we, we don't wish that on him. Because uh, I said he was a true racing car tra champion. Now, this all gone energy, of course, is big business in Australia, probably around the world. And there's an outfit in Victoria, the state of Victoria, called Orgon Effects Australia. And then there's one of the people behind it, Jared Binney, at a Mind Body Wallet, Mind Body Spirit Festival. And I've, I've had dealings with him, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and he, I'm pretty sure he absolutely, completely believes in this Orgon energy and all the things it can do. Sometimes you can tell after a while when someone's sincere and some or someone's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. These are some of the things that he claims he can do with his business using Oregon Energy. Uh, he offers building uh, consultancy, so he'll go and check your building for sick building syndrome or evil energy lines and stuff like that, and then he can sell you the cure, of course. But all these sort of weird things, including paranormal projections imprints and activities um, again and we got the smart meter fear sort of thrown in there uh, also ley lines all sorts of things all sorts of weird things that they charge I'm not sure what they charge probably a pretty penny for going along and checking your building you could walk around here and say well oh, oh ley line here okay we've got the dirty energy right here and, and so on and then suggest uh, the cure or the remedy and also, not only that, they sell products. Now, we've seen these last night, these little pyramids, organite pyramids, which help protect your home from naughty radiation and everything. But one for the car. Look at that. You can plug it into the cigarette lighter and plug your USB, and it harmonizes your music or something like that. <laughs> Brush your worries away with the organ toothbrush. It just staggers the imagination. Oh, I feel better now. Um, there's a, a gift bag in the far corner there with all sorts of wonderful things you can buy, necklaces and all sorts of things. And a good old uh, wristband, like a power balance wristband there, which does the same sort of claims, and we'll get to later on, which power balance claim to improve your strength, endurance, and everything. It's just a bit of rubber. Some more products they sell, lots of pendants and things like that. Uh, we've got this plug-in device we'll get to in a moment. How much is that? GeoCleanse, $120. Uh, water energizers and whole, whole swathes of products. And people line up to buy these products. Here's this one, this plug-in thing, the GeoCleanse, a simple solution for all electromagnetic radiation in your home. And there are all the claims. Proven technology. Well... I'm sorry, I better leave. <laughs> what am I talking about? And this is simply a, a, a block of resin with, with electric plugs in it for a plug, and you plug it in, but you don't have to turn on the switch. <laughs> I kid you not. And this is where some sound comes through, so let's see if this... This is their, one of their advertising, so we'll just play that. Mm 
Feeling physical symptoms of lethargy, nausea, headaches and other discomfort? It could be from the electromagnetic radiation being emitted from your digital TV screen or microwave. GeoCleanse is a solid state negative ion generator. It balances the positive ion known as harmful energy. With so many appliances in your home emitting electromagnetic energy, the wise move to protect your family's health is to invest in a GeoCleanse. Create a healthy environment home with GeoCleanse. Available at Organ Effects Australia. Who's, I've got some if anybody wants to buy some. I, I think there's more money to be made in that than skepticism sometimes, I think. So how do we know these wonderful uh, devices work? As I said before, here's one that they sell for the back of phones, which will eliminate the naughty radiation and harmful effects of your mobile phone. Put the sticker on the back, and there's proof positive from an aura test. You see that? I, I'm not sure which is the before and which is the after. To be honest, I think that's before and that's after. Maybe you get this shield of energy protecting you. It's stronger down the bottom. That's right. Isn't that amazing? So we uh, in Australian Skeptics, we are doing a, uh, an investigation. There are other things you can buy in Australia, probably here too, which you whack on your phone and they say will help protect you from the radiation and all this sort of stuff. So we, we bought several of them. And then I wrote to... Well, I, I placed an online order, I should say, to Organ Effects for their phone sticker because we wanted to get collect as many as, as we possibly could. Um, and within uh, an hour, less, an hour or something like that, I got this notice coming back. Organ Effects Australia has sent you a full refund of $35, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, huh? What? I just bought it and they're offering me a refund. And then a few hours later, well, not long later, the, the time codes are on there, um, I get this into my text. <laughs> now, <laughs> so I, I, when I got that, I knew exactly because a year before, a year before, I had spoken with one of the people, not Jared Binney, the man you saw, but his, his colleague, at the stand, and I had a, a nice, pleasant discussion with him. I said, look, I don't think this, these things work. Um, and we, ha we have $100,000. Here's our challenge. We're quite happy if you think they work to do a, a test and you can show us that they work. And it wasn't uh, mean or aggressive or anything like that. I've learned long since that that gets you nowhere. And he wasn't mean or aggressive to me. And we said, okay, thank you very much. But I... W in my imaginings, what I would think happened was he then related this to Jared Binney, the other guy, who probably went off his nut, but the skeptics were trying to, to find out more information. And uh, he's putting his foot down, saying, no skeptical investigation. Now, this year at the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival, when uh, me and some colleagues, and this will be in the ne next issue of the Skeptic magazine, subscribe today, we, we were walking along down the, 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 hall, the, the laneway or whatever it is towards their stand again. And we were chatting to some people about something. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see the Yorgon Effect stand. And then I saw one of them bolt like he, his pants was on fire. And he just ran out like a rabbit. And about a minute later, he returned with security. And as we just moved along and there they were, both men were there telling me to go away. We know why you're here. You're from the skeptics. We don't like you. You're upsetting us. One of them whipped out his camera and took a photograph of me. And they were agitated and nervous as hell. Which really um, took me a bit by surprise. Because, uh, you know, I don't agree with a lot of what people do. But I, I would hate to think that people are actually scared of me. If I was coming along and people think they're physically scared that I'm, I'm coming to see them. So it was just very strange. But nevertheless, these people are engaged in selling lots of products that simply don't work. So our, the next step is to pursue them through fair trading or, or whatever we can do. Because at the end of the day, whether they believe in it or not, they're selling a service and a device that simply doesn't work. And people are forking over lots and lots of money. So that's the Orgon story. Scalar energy. Now, I've come across this quite a lot in many different things including these power bands. Some of them say they work on scalar energy. What is it? That's scalar energy now, actually. <laughs> it, 
It's a poltergeist in the room. <laughs> right, okay. I'll, it's all right, folks. I'm here. <laughs> in fact, whenever I turn up to do a ghost investigation, the poltergeists go quickly. Because they're never there, right? I have powers I don't know. So it depends who you talk to or what website you look at to find a definition for scalar energy. They just, it's really, people just make up stuff. It's wonderful. Look at all these terms. Waves of energy are tunneled into the pendant using scanning, tunneling, microscope, uh, bonding, embedded. It's, it's what we, uh, zero point energy, there we go. It's what we call word, word salad. It's all these wonderful words matched together and sort of, to the uninitiated, might sound science-y or something like that. We have some more here. You know, oh, look! Bingo! Who's playing Tesla bingo? There he is. Um, I, I won't go into that, but you can see for yourself. It's, you, you can do this at home, folks. In the privacy of your own home, you can make up your own pseudoscience. You just get lots of words from science, you mix them all together, and, and you, you can string them into sentences and things like that. It's wonderful stuff. I came across the scalar energy Oh, five, six years ago at the Mind, Body, Spirit, maybe longer. And this is what it was. It was a pendant. It looked more or less like that. It's about the size of a poker chip. And the claims are what you would expect. Put this on. It'll incre increase your balance, your strength, your flexibility, your zest, your wellness. There's a lovely word, wellness. Um, and so on and so on and so on. In, in other words, it does everything using scalar energy. And here am I having the test by this woman at the stand there where she's demonstrating how it really works by giving me the applied kinesiology test, which we know very well. And this, this was an interesting uh, case because then she went on to explain the wonders of this pendant and she said, if you get this pendant and put it under a flask of water and leave it there for a little while, it, it energizes the water. And one of the things it does is it turns it into a sunblock. That's her now. She's <laughs> coming to have an argument with me. And, and she was serious. She really believed this. A lot of these people really believe it. And it's something, as skeptics, we must be very conscious of. We can't assume everybody selling this stuff is, is lying. They're not. She wasn't lying. She really believed it. To the extent that she was telling me about how when her grandchildren go out, she gets the flask and puts the thing on, then covers their arms and faces with this energized water. And it's one of the very few times I had strong words at the Mind Body Wallet. I really had strong words. And I said, you cannot make these claims. This is really dangerous. I don't know what happened to her. But yeah, she was one of the true believers, I'm sure. Again, like the Orgon people, look at this. Wow, it's just a paradise of, of gifts. Come to our gift shop. Fusion XL is the name of that company. Watches and, and, and pens? Pen. That's to write your check to the company, I suppose. A night mask, the water flask, there it is. So it's, it's merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Now, this is an interesting thing I only discovered the other day, is that this year the Australian government put out a warning against these uh, pendants because they're radioactive. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're radioactive. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Because, to be honest, I was doing research for this talk. And up came this, oh, good grief. So they really are radioactive. But then Fusion XL hit back saying, well, it's the fake products that are radioactive. <laughs> and on their website, here's one, it's a fake, this is a fake. So I haven't got to the bottom of this one yet. I'm not sure if the, <laughs> if the <re> it sounds weird, the real product or the fake. <laughs> 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 The, real, the fake real one or the real fake one? <laughs> the fake fake. Oh, no, we, this is a rabbit hole. But that's, that's, that's just, wow, that's amazing that these things... Although, it's, it's, you know, given that it's, it's a little bit radioactive, it's radioactive nevertheless and could conceivably uh, do you harm. That's, that's just astonishing. Now I'm going to move on to one of the um, hot investigations we're doing right now in collaboration with our colleagues at the Good Thinking Society in the UK. This is a company called Aquapol. This is fascinating. And the subtitle there is Lack of Science Education Equals Success. And you'll understand why pretty soon. Aquapol is a device marketed to rid your home of rising damp. 
This is a, a graphic of it, um, of it there. It was invented by this man, um, Wilhelm Mohorn, in Austria. That's what the device looks like in situ, hanging from the ceiling. Um, there it is there. Can, can everybody see that all right, or should we turn the lights off? Is, we're, we're, we're. Why that plane flies overhead? Just so you can see uh, uh, some of the details a bit, a bit better. Where's the light switch? <laughs> that was everything, this. It's weird. Uh, so, this is what the device looks like inside, more or less, this weird sculpt oh, thank you, sculpture. There's a, a close-up of it with all the coils and the, the antennae bits and the wire and everything like that. So, this, this guy, Wilhelm Mohorn, uh, is, markets himself as a natural scientist, and uh, he founded this company. I've got here, he was born on the 25th of November in 1954 in Vienna. There we go, a bit of extra information. Uh, and, and this is from his own uh, information. Engineer Wilhelm Mohorn, uh, principles of, principal subjects of interest were mathematics and physics. He graduated in, in engine construction during his study of Dianetics. Okay, there is a Scientology connection which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and he discovered this principle uh, when there was a few old cro corroded musical instruments in his cellar. I don't, I, I don't know how that led to him inventing this, this device. Here's another view of it. Again, that's what it looks like when it's hung up from the ceiling. So you can imagine instead of this light here, there's a, this device just hanging up there from the ce ceiling. And that's inside, although I th think these antennae things sticking out probably uh, retract or they're, they're taken out. Now I assume when you, if you buy one that really is inside. I, I'm not sure we haven't bought one to find out because they're very expensive. And there he is demonstrating it or looking at it in one of his promotional videos. It does look like something from a, an old sailing ship or some weird scientific instrument like that. So how does it work? I'll, I'll, here's a spoiler, it doesn't, but anyway. And this is from the pamphlet here. The Earth is an inexhaustible, inexhaustible source of energy with its magnetic field. This natural energy of the Earth is captured by the aquapole device through the receiving antenna. Um, in there somewhere. Here's the energy coming in, look at that. Um... The device then sends out energy waves that penetrates the walls and affects the water molecules, forcing the water back down into the ground, a process called magnetokinesis. Wow. So basically you install this device and what happens is this mystical magnetic earth energy is drawn in, concentrated, then radiated back out and affects the water molecules in your wall, which forces them back down into the ground. Quick question. <laughs> if, you, if you put it upside down, we'll pull the water up. Yes, probably would. Yes, it probably would. Uh, now, the biggest mistake Aquapol have ever made is that they did a, let, a, a, a letterbox drop, and one of those was in the letterbox of the chief investigator of Australian skeptics, our friend Ian Bryce. And Ian got in touch with them. He said, we're going to nominate you for the Ben Spoon, <laughs> our Ben Spoon. And they sent their rep around to Ian's house. There's their rep. Uh, his name's T, T Forey, Flat Forey. There he is with Ian, with a, with a real instrument measuring the damp in the wall, which he, it really does. And he spent an hour with us discussing this Aquapole device. And by the end of the hour, uh, Ian, Ian and I were pretty sure that this man is really convinced it works. And there's many reasons for that. I mean, after a long time in this game, when you talk to somebody, the answers they give, you get an understanding of whether they truly believe in something. Uh, and he, he's a, he was a really nice guy. He's, he's probably a really nice guy who had some gumption and had some enterprise and was part of this business. He thinks really works and he thinks it's doing a, a great job. 
We need one over there, I think. Oh, it's, it's the food coming. Um, and it was, it's a bit heartbreaking, you know, when these people really believe in something like this. Mind you, when, when we said we have $100,000 for you, for you, not, you, not your bosses, not anybody else, for you, if you can demonstrate this thing works, his eyes lit up. It's another clue to us that they're sincere. They can see the dollar signs. They think, of course it works, I'll collect your money. Uh, so he said, what I'll do is I'll just let Willy, Wilhelm Mohorn in Austria, know about this. And in, in my head I thought, oh well, that's, that's predictable. What's going to happen is Wilhelm, Willy Mohorn's going to tell him under no circumstances are you to be tested by these people. Because, well, you can, you can understand why, I think. And sure enough, a little while later, um, we get this, uh, Ian gets this email from uh, T basically saying that we are not able to demonstrate it, th this thing within 24 hours, which on their promotional video, it can be tested in 24 hours. Uh, and, it, and also, and an excuse we've had before, also said that we don't fit the criteria of the skeptics, you know, like telekinesis or any of these groups. Well, it, we Ted said to him point blank, this fits the criteria. This is an energy unknown to science, ab absolutely. But they're just looking for ways not to be tested now. Which must put this T in an interesting situation. But he also flies back regularly to consult with Wilhelm in, um, in Austria. So we're getting back to this guru we mentioned before. This is the head guy. His followers think he has come, uh, stumbled across this amazing energy. And I, we said to him, okay, so this, this device can do all these things and it's just used for rising damp? What about all the other applications around the world that this technology could be used for? And I said, well, what about the Nobel Prize? Where's that? Things that hadn't occurred to him before. Here's the device in situ. This is in uh, the, the town of Mudgee in New South Wales because the council bought one for the historic uh, police station. And um, what we will probably do at some stage is write to the council, pointing out a few things. This is all from their brochure and other people around the world uh, using this. Now, our investigations we have led us to collaborate with a Good Thinking Society in the UK, Michael Marshall, who many of you may have heard about. And he's made many inquiries in the UK about this and has discovered that not only has it received government accreditation, it's also been installed in some very famous law courts, law um, chambers in the UK and the Vatican. So this is this. Hopefully, this is going to be a big story in 2017. Um, there's pressure here. There's pressure in the UK. We've got someone in America looking at it because there's a university that it's installed one, uh, and it costs the the base units over eight thousand dollars. That's just for your home. I think uh, there are bigger ones that the price goes up quite dramatically. <laughs> here we go. Bingo! And for some reason, there are two pictures of Albert Einstein there. If you might. <laughs> and with this interesting quote here, it's easier to split an atom than a prejudice. Well, so what? Does your device work or not? I implying that, that people like me or whatever it is, or science in general, don't believe in this just because of prejudice. No, we don't believe in it because it doesn't work. I think it's more likely. Good old, good old uh, Albert Einstein. I don't know why they... I, does anybody recognize the other gentlemen around there? I haven't had a chance to look to see who they are exactly. I think my grandfather's there somewhere. I don't anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. I'm sure he'd be thrilled to be part of this. Uh, <laughs> Is there, is there any reason why they're all dead? Well, if they're alive, I think they'd have something to say about this. All right, next strange device. Here we go. We're on a roll. Oh, the premium wine card. This is one of my favorite over the last few years, and I have one here. Oh, let me... Oh, this is a beauty. There we are. There we go. That's the premium wine card. I think it's just made out of cheap metal or whatever. Let me pass that around. Have a quick squeeze at that and pass it on. 
This is a remarkable device, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think it was being marketed, probably still is, for about 117 odd Australian dollars. Uh, it's about the size of a credit card, as you will see. And what it does, it's just, it's wonderful. We should be using it here at the convention, I'm sure. It will, in, it will turn a normal wine into a premium wine in just seconds. It really is remarkable. But as long as you use it right, you don't need it for New Zealand wine. <laughs> Uh, we need it back home. All right. <laughs> but how, I hear you cry, how do you actually use it? How does this make wine uh, taste better? Well, let's have a look. Welcome to the Premium Wine Card. Premium Wine Card is the latest technology which allows you to change the taste of ordinary wine into premium wine in just a few seconds. Today I'm going to show you a simple test so you can enjoy better tasting wine yourself. This glass will have the wine poured straight from the bottle, and this glass will have the wine treated with the premium wine card. This is the wine poured straight from the bottle. When you smell the wine, it may now have a full fruit flavour. <laughs> if there is a strong smell coming from the wine, then gently blow into the glass to remove it. <laughs> Taste the treated wine first. Now taste the glass of ordinary wine that was poured straight from the bottle. You will immediately notice that the wine treated with the premium wine card tastes so much better. Cheers. Improving the taste of your wine is that simple. It's proof positive. So there it is. How simple is that? How simple is that? Um, and again, like, like many of these things, there are long explanations here of how it works. The premium wine card contains an embedded set of precise frequencies that, produ <laughs> that produce a long-lasting natural resonance. The resonance can be transferred to the wine through the glass by rubbing and tapping it and all this sort of stuff. Oh, you can also use it to treat tea, coffee, vegetable juice, uh, all sorts of things. How long will it last? What does it say here? A million applications. <laughs> I think it'd be worn out by then. Now, one of the ways that they use to, to prove to people that this really does improve the taste of wine is they have um, <clears throat> uh, live demonstrations at the... Um, um, yeah, it's weird. What's the word? Um, I can think of the German word, Ausstellung. <laughs> uh, uh, presentations, where lots of people are. What's that called? A um, Expos. Sorry. Throwback to when I used to live in Germany. <laughs> expos. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so they have this premium wine stand at an expo, and people come along and try it. Watch this very carefully, and pay particular attention to the reactions of the people trying the wine with and without the, the wine card. <clears throat> Here we go. Maybe you don't mind if you record your, your chemical reaction? <laughs> okay. Because you will get no cash. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's, so um, was that 15 seconds? That was 15 seconds. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. That's more than enough. So now you taste the treated, uh, treated glass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now we we'll get you to taste the one straight out of the bottle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep to the camera. <laughs> 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 
It's a big reaction. Now, these, these women, they're not reacting to a glass of wine which tastes a little bit better. These are, these are people reacting to something which tastes bad. So I wasn't there. I don't know what was really going on. But if I was to do it, I might put a little bit of vinegar in one glass and not in the other to make it taste a bit off or something like that. Because they are simply not the reactions of two wines that sort of taste the same but one tastes a little bit better. They're not. So we have been trying to get these people to front up on TV to do a test. And it was a strange story because a couple of years ago, uh, the, the, uh, one of the network shows in Australia went and tested them. Uh, and filmed it, but it was never used. And ever since then, the company have been trumpeting, oh, we've been tested by this TV show, even though it was never used. And they used that to justify not doing any more tests. It's a long email, but it's basically saying that we've been already tested in a double-blind test by the Today Tonight uh, TV show on Channel 7. Uh, people always coming to us saying we wanted to be tested. No, it's already been done. It's just a way of fobbing it off. It's just... So that's the premium. It's doing the rounds, I hope. We can use it a bit later for the water or something. All right, moving right along. The Metatron. How am I for time, by the way, Susan? I don't want to eat into your time too much. We're doing okay? All right. Here's another one, and Loretta, you, I'm sure you'll find this one interesting. Metatron nonlinear scanning. Health checks that aren't. Health checks that aren't. I first came across this one at the Mind Body Wallet Festival in Sydney by this naturopath here. Uh, Danuta Huiko, Hu uh, from Poland, I think she is, originally. And she's offering this service where she can check your entire internal organs down to your DNA and then offer some treatments for it. And her, her background is, she's a naturopath, but at her clinic we got things already being thrown in here like theta healing, Reiki, iridology, so you not, sort of know where she's coming from. Uh, I've met her, I've, I've spoken with her, and as far as I'm concerned, she can, she's a complete believer. She believes all the naturopathic stuff. Um, and on her website, they've, she says they use scientific diagnostic tools. This is this tool we'll, we'll get to in a minute. But a bit into her mindset, you can all see she's in the conspiracies, anti-vaccination, fluoride, chemtrails, and so on. So she's, she's the whole parcel. She's brought into everything like that. So I would suspect she believes in big pharma conspiracies and all the rest of it. So we came across this at the Mind Body Wallet. There it is at the stand there. Uh, discover the amazing benefits, nonlinear scanning, and a special price at the, at the fair. It was $115 for a, a test there. And this is more or less how it works. Here's our president of uh, the Australian Skeptics, Aran Segev, having a go. Here's the machine itself, which is a laptop with a computer program. Hooked up to the laptop, uh, the device he's wearing on his head, which is sort of like a pair of headphones, which you sit above your ears. And the idea is that this machine will send out sort of a message through into your body. The vibrations go through your body, come back, and are fed back into the machine, and you get a scan of your body. Although Iran had to fill out a big long form, including, I certify that I'm not representing a law firm, or involved in a lawsuit. I accept no promise of cure or any curative effect. But it's the whole bloody idea. <laughs> they're set, she's, she's not there selling a toy for fun. She's there and people come along to get a health check. So this, 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 this waiver or disclaimer is just ridiculous. Here are some screenshots of the thing in action. So you put this on, it whirs in away, and suddenly you get images of your internal organs with lots of dots and spots and things saying, well, here's a pathogen, here's a virus, here's a whatever. And we can see it in action, actually, here. 
Let's see, let's press this button. There we go. Now it's clever. Somebody has spent a lot of time putting this together. And to, I'm sure to many people when they sit down, they really think they're getting a, a diagnosis from a scientific machine because there's your, a cross-section of whatever that is. I'm not a doctor. And it's showing all these things. And look, look, there's lines going over here. There are your kidneys. It's incredible. And on it goes. And better than that, once it's done, it will create a homeopathic remedy. <laughs> she puts a little jar in there and out it pops, ready to go. But one of the claims that, of course, is made, and this is right off her, her promotional video, is that this machine will or can uh, be involved in zapping viruses. And I'm pretty sure that's an illegal claim now. I've got to check with that one, Loretta. There you go. So she, on Facebook, she was saying, uh, uh, you know, she was trumpeting the fact she's coming up for this uh, mind body wallet. And I just made a quick comment looks too good to be true. She replied, Why don't you come to the mind body spirit and see for yourself rather than expressing your opinion without understanding the technology? And I said, that, Look, it just doesn't exist. And then I offered to, offered to uh, test her for the $100,000 challenge because that was the end of conversation. They're not interested. But my last message is very important. The health authorities. Sometimes literally they're asleep at the wheel, aren't they? I mean, they really are. The, the, the danger, of course, the big danger is that someone goes along with, with a condition for cancer, for example. This machine checks them, can't find it because it, can't, it doesn't work. This is Star Trek stuff. And the person then delays proper diagnosis for cancer or, or whatever the case may be. And this is from Russia. This is Russian technology, folks, from the Institute of Practical Psychophysics. That's the founder now. <laughs> yeah, I'll wrap up now. Yeah. Uh, Psychophysics founded in Omsk in 1990, and they upgrade the software every now and then and peddle it out to the world, and people keep buying it. So. And it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big business, of course. One hour will uh, set you back $250 normally at her clinic. But they offer ways that you can, you know, buy the machine. Here's the, it's in euros. It's a business, you know. They're the people in Russia are marketing a machine that naturopaths and people around, all around the world are buying. What I have next is a, a quick section on power bands. But I tell you what, what we'll do is uh, I'll save that for later on. We can, in formal talks, I can demonstrate all the power bands and, and stuff like that. So let me skip forward very quickly to, to, to the wrap up part. Oh, I'll show you that one. That's when I busted another power band and they ended up in the reject shop and, or the, the, the reverse cycle for two dollars each. That was, yay! <laughs> I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, to wrap up. Why, did, why are the, so many people like this woman and T and all these people, they, they believe in it? Lots of reasons. There's a lack of basic science understanding in the community. Uh, people have, these people have a general belief in the new age. You can say a lack of training, a lack of education maybe. Some, I've heard the term willful ignorance. They won't look for other answers. They're happy with their belief system. Lots of them have business opportunities in this, all this uh, new age energy. A lot of them have very large financial investments and they don't want to rock that boat and emotional too. Conspiracy theories, they distrust big companies or modern science or stuff like that. And there's the feedback loop, which happens with psychics a lot and also happens with these people in, in this industry. So we have to explain this, say we have what I call the fish cycle. If you catch a, a small fish and the retelling, the fish gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like this. The feedback, you know, I caught a big fish, it, it keeps, keeps growing and it's fun and nobody cares, but it's this, this growing of, of um, the, the, the original story. What happens with psychics and what happens with naturopaths and a lot of people. So where it says psychic reading, you can, you can put naturopathic consultation or something like that. They, they, they go for a consultation or a psychic reading. Um, the person, the patient, patient is, is pleased with the result. Maybe they, they had a nice time. They think they're getting benefit. When they go back again, 
they will reinforce to the naturopath or the psychic how good they are. Yes, you are great, I'm coming back, can you please help me some more? And then these people will tell their friends. Their friends turn up at the naturopath's door and said, I've been recommended. So the naturopath or the psychic is getting this continual positive feedback. No wonder they believe in what they're doing. No wonder they believe. And this is a great quote by Benjamin Franklin, who wrote under the name of Richard Saunders. He really did. <laughs> People ask me about that. They say, did you change your names? No. It's right. um, there are no greater lies in the world than quacks, except for their patients. And what I think he was referring to then was, once somebody believes in a remedy or a cure or something, you know, they're not lying as such, but they'll hang on to that. They'll just hang on to that regardless. It's a whole fascinating world of psychology when you get into skepticism. It really is. And thank you very much, folks. Thank you. <laughs> now, not to cut in until this time, we'll, we'll just take a few questions, I think. I need to sit down anyway. Thank you. Uh, in New Zealand, we have the Consumer Institute, I think. It's called Choice in Australia. Choice magazine, yeah, they do a good job, yeah. Do you ever work with them? Mm. Yes and no. I, I go and have meetings with them occasionally, and um, they, they did a, a lot of work on Power Band, as it happened. They, they gave it a Shonky Award. But what we, they're strictly independent. So what we can do from time to time is we can say, we're looking at this. What do you think? You run with it, and they, and that's the end. That's the end of it. We don't hear any more, so they can maintain their independence. And if they choose to test it and pursue it and publish about it, great. They don't want to have the situation where people say, "Ah, oh, you were influenced by the skeptics." You see, and I think that's great. That's fine. So we, I've told them all about Aquapole and Gene and Cleanse and all this sort of stuff. If they pursue it, I'd, I'd be pleased. That, yeah, but yes, they're independent, and we can appreciate that. Yeah, question here. When you spoke about the woman who used applied kinesiology yep. and said, but she genuinely wasn't lying, how did she know to apply different points for the applied kinesiology? That's a really good question. Uh, and I saw this with the guy in Australia who was the marketing guy be behind Power Balance. Just as... The viners are fooled by the idiomotor action where they don't realize they're moving their muscles to make the rods twist and turn. Believe it or not, the same sort of thing can happen to people doing muscle testing. When they're sincere and they're doing this and they know you've got the magic watch on or not, they will actually change how they're doing it. But they're not, they don't change it to trick you. They're, they don't know they're changing it. They think they're still doing the same sort of test. And it's a variation of the idiomotor action. And we, there's lots of warning signs and red flags why we know that's the case when people are sincere, like the guy from Power Balance. One of the biggest indicators for us when someone is sincere is they want, they want to be tested for the million do um, for the $100,000. So, yeah, it's fascinating. It really is, yeah. All righty. Oh, one, one last question over there, I think. Oh. Are you aware of a German study that showed that if you believe a wine is better, it does actually taste better. That, that there is some change in your oh. physiology or something. Uh, no, on. I'm not aware of that, but I want to take part in it. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> we can use the wine card, I think. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right. Yes, yes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen.